geometric progression. This is the second video in the series of geometric progression and now we are focusing on the term formula. Tn stands for a particular term. In a geometric series, the term formula is a r raised to power of n minus 1. Our Tn is any particular term, a is the first term, r is the multiplication factor, the common ratio. What is the definition of common ratio? It is the second term divided by the first term and n is the number of terms. For example, if I take the value of n to be 1 and if I plug in the equation, the first term simplifies to simply a. Similarly, when I plug in n is equals to 2, what do you think it would simplify to? It would simplify to a r. Similarly, n is equals to 3, third term is a r square n is equals to 4, what do you think t4 would be? t4 would be a r cube and so on. Now what is the pattern that you are observing over here? The pattern is whenever whatever is the value of n, the power of r is always one less. Look at the following sequence. Look at the following terms t1, t2, t3, t4, t5. When the value of n is 5, the power of r is 4. When the value of n is 4, the power of r is 3. So it's always 1 less. Now look at the following series. 1, 2, 4, 8 and so on. The first term is 1. The common ratio is 2. The particular term is 1, 0, 2, 4. Now this time what I am trying to do is that if I know the first term, if I know the common ratio, can I figure out using the term formula which, what is the position of the term in the series which will give me 1024, which means Tn is equals to 1024. What's the value of n? Now, if I write it in the formula, Tn is a r n minus 1. 1024 is 1, 2 raised to power of n minus 1. Now, a little bit of indices is needed over here. 1024, we know it's 2 raised to power of 10. And over here, what I am trying to do is that since indices, you can play with the powers. 2 raised to power of n minus 1. Can I write this thing as 2 raised to power of n divided by 2 raised to power of 1? So there are two options of solving this. The left hand side option is the easier one. 1024 is 2 raised to power of 10. And we know the rule from indices that if the bases are the same, the powers should equal. So n minus 1 equals to 10. Therefore, n comes out to be 11. Right hand side, 1024 multiplied by 2. And this is equals to 2 raised to power of n. 1024 is 2 raised to power of 10. 2 itself is 2 raised to power of 1. Therefore, again, using the same basic rules of indices, 2 raised to power of 11 is 2 raised to power of n. Therefore, n comes out to be 11. Now, in this particular question, if the examiner asks you, what is the sum of all the terms in the series that we will see later on based upon the sum formula? Now, over here on the left hand side column, the rules of indices, indices are written a raised to power of m into a raised to power of n, that is a m plus n. a raised to power of m divided by a raised to power of n, that is a m minus n. The two rules written in the left hand column in black. Those two rules are related if the bases are the same. Similarly, the two rules which I have just tick marked as blue, they are related to the fact that if the powers are the same and the bases are different, this is what you do. Everyone is familiar with these basic rules of indices. And on the right hand column, what I have written is that the common powers that we come across in these geometric progression problems. 2 raised to power of 4 is 16, 2 raised to power of 8 is 256 and so on. 3 cube is 27, multiply 27 by 3, that's 3 raised to power of 4, which is 81. 3 raised to power of 5 is 243 and so on. There are some powers of 4, some powers of 5, 6 cube and some powers of 7. So these comes in handy. 
Now look at this question. The question says, find the number of terms in each of the following geometric progression. Now, if I focus on this one, in which the first term is 1, the common ratio is minus 2. This is a small mistake. This is ratio is minus 2 and the term is 1024. Can I find how many terms are there in the series? Yes, this is this question very similar to what we just did, except for the fact that this time the common ratio is not 2, it's minus 2, negative 2. The concept is still the same. We know that 2 raised to power of 10 is 1024. We also know for a fact that a negative number raised to an even power would become positive. So instead of writing 2 raised to power of 10, can I write this thing as negative 2 raised to power of 10? The answer is yes. So negative 2 raised to power of 10 is negative 2 raised to power of n minus 1. Therefore, n comes out to be 11. Let's look at another example. Part H. 64, 32, 16, dot, 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 all the way till 1 over 8. The first term is 64. Common ratio is half. Term is 1 over 8. Again, the examiner, the author, is interested in finding the number of terms in the series. Again, using indices, which you can see for yourself, that how the working is done. 1 over 64 is 64 is taken on the other side. 1 over 8 into 1 over 64 is half raised to power of n minus 1. 8 is 2 cubed. 64 is 2 power 6. So therefore, if I show the working on this side, this is 1 over 2 cube into 1 over 2 power 6, which becomes 1 over 2 power 9. And the rest of the working is based upon simple O-level basic maths. And again, the powers are the same. The bases are the same. Therefore, equate the powers. Therefore, the value of n is 10. Now, let's look at this question. A question in which the first term a and common ratio r is unknown. What is the information given? In a GP, the second term is negative 12 and the fifth term is 768. Find the common ratio and the first term. Now we know for a fact that Tn is a r raised to power of n minus 1. The power of n minus 1 is only the power of r. A is always all alone. Now second term simply means a r. And fifth term, what do you think it means? It means a r raised to power of 4. Now, an equation which involves unknowns, two equations with two unknown can be solved simultaneously. But this simultaneous equation is slightly different because it does not have a plus or a minus sign in the middle as such. So this cannot be solved using elimination. It has to be solved using substitution. Now, let's look at the working. T2 is negative 12. T5 is 768. Whatever info is given to you at the beginning, write it in that particular uh, scenario, in that particular type. That if they are talking about term, do not jump into conclusion that the term is this and this. Whatever info is given, first write it as it is, then decide upon the fact that T2 is in fact AR. T5 is AR raised to power of 4. Now, make A the subject from both the equation because A in a GP will always be all alone without any power. From the first expression, from the first equation, A is negative 12 over R. From the second one, A is 768 over R4. Therefore, equating the two values of A in terms of R will give you the value of R. Negative 12 over R is 768 over R4. R cube comes out to be negative 64. Therefore, R comes out to be negative 4. Plugging in R in any one of the two equations, the first one is simpler, naturally. Therefore, that gives you the value of A as 3. Now, that's all about how we can use the term formula to solve questions in geometric progression related to two unknowns. In our third lecture, we would be focusing on the sum formula and then questions that involve both the term formula and the sum formula.